Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant, and welcome back to Everspace. Has been sought in recovering some lost goods. Oh, well, we've got to search for some lost goods then. And uh, this is a pretty interesting looking location, isn't it? What's this over here? Oh, we're straight away under attack. So I actually haven't played this for a little while. There's been a lot of updates with Elite Dangerous, which has been keeping me very busy. But, you know, we're back here again. Everspace is actually one of my more uh, interesting uh, space games. I do like a bit of space combat. As I've said many times before, not particularly brilliant it most of the time. But nonetheless, I do actually enjoy it. Where is he? Oh, we've got a different weapon here. You know, I forget. It's been so long that I've actually done this particular run through. I'm carrying on from the last time that I've forgotten what weapons I've actually got equipped already. And we're starting to pay for that now. We're going to have to start using the missiles here. We're taking one heck of a lot of damage. I don't really want to die straight away. Where are these ships? There's so many of them. Come on. We're out of weapons. Okay. Let's try and build some more missiles. Oh, we can only build two, unfortunately, and that will probably ruin my chances of repair. No, we haven't got any nanobots anyway. No, I don't even know what system I'm in. Right, let's move out of here for a bit. Give this shield a bit of a chance to speed up. Look at the cracked canopy. Nice little touch there in terms of details. Well, let's get that shield charged up and... Let's wait for the Okar fighter to come over here. So the ship is pretty extensively damaged already, so not the most auspicious of starts. But sometimes I guess that's how it goes. I think we're down to this last ship though. Hopefully we can... Oh, his shield's coming back up. Come on. Yes, that was a lot closer than I would have liked. There we go. Like I say, not the best of starts. I don't know what zone I'm actually in. Oh, we're only in Sector 1. What the heck? That was a massively intense fight for Sector 1. Hmm. There we go. Right, let's go and pick up all the bits over here, so... And uh, have a look at what's dotted, dotted about. So this came out just a little while ago on the PlayStation 4. I did do a, a playthrough on that, or did a couple of videos, I think, on the PlayStation version. Let's just get up over here. This though is the PC version of the game. They're all equally as good as each other but obviously I'm playing on keyboard and mouse here and on the console version you do need to use a controller but it is available on PlayStation as well as Xbox. Okay. Where's all those resources gone then? There we are. Bit of a shame because I was actually doing quite good on this run through originally. Let's try and get as much fuel back up as we can. So, for those of you that don't know, this is basically a, a roguelike game. We actually move through the star map. We start off in Zone 1 of Sector 1, and we move through here. We can choose our course, and we get to my current location, which is at the end of this particular sector. Now, these guys here, these are mission givers, and I've already got a mission for them. Uh, let's see if this shows up. We've got a few missions here. This guy here, an Okar trader named Tareen, offered me a business opportunity, but first I need to prove my worth. 
Tarine wants me to bring him a 200 scrap. I need to. I need. I still need to deliver 175. So roguelike games, basically what happens is that when you die, you lose a lot of your progress and end up back at the start again. But there are some persistent elements here on uh, Everspace. <coughs> Excuse me. Essentially, you do get missions that you can uh, that will persist. So if I die, I will be able to carry on and continue delivering the rest of the uh, scrap metal to him. This other one says I should pay Maurice a visit and collect my reward. So I've obviously completed whatever mission I had for him. This one here, same. I agreed to help Elec in relieving GMB of some resources. So essentially, all of these are missions that come from the Encounters expansion pack. And yet, they do add a bit of life to the game. You'll also find other uh, alien encounters dotted around. Where are we? So yeah. Um, we've, we've got trouble with the shield generator. It needs repairing. And we can't use the secondary weapons, which is a bit of a shame. That explains why I couldn't fire off the two light missiles that I actually had. So the ship has been so damaged that we've actually lost the functionality of these. But, you know, it could have been worse. I could have lost inertia dampeners or I could have lost life support. I could have even lost sensors or engines. So we're pretty good, I suppose. We may find the opportunity to gather a few goods. Essentially, we just need the nanobots to do some of those repairs or most of those repairs. Let's have a look, I think. Nanobots will do... No, nanobots will repair the hull, but we need a few other extras to repair these. We can pick these up as I go. So as I was saying, uh, your items down here, these are the items that you collect on your journey through the game, and these allow you to do repairs. They also let you to do uh, temporary upgrades, but all of this you lose when you die. But the one thing you don't lose is your credits, and you'll see what we can do with them. So just doing a quick talk through for that because I know there's a lot of new people that have joined my channel relatively recently and uh, they probably haven't seen me ever play the game before so and as well actually explain a few details as we go. So drone uh, override. I don't want that. I'm going to salvage it and take the little bit of scrap. Right, we're going to go through the jump... Oh no, we've got a few other resources here. Scrap. A drone override, another one. You know what, I'm just going to get out of here before any more bad guys turn up. I would like to get to Sector 2, even if I only stay there for a few seconds. So I don't know what's going on with the frame rate again. This does seem to be a bit of an issue with the capture software, at least. On the uh, computer screen, it's running, running flawlessly at... At 55 frames a second. Oh, this is interesting. Carly, hey, fancy that. Pretty crazy coincidence, right? Adam, what are you doing here? I just happen to be in the area. I'm as amazed as you are. Really? You, uh, you can use wormholes? Now well, that is unusual. I, I can detect and open up wormholes. It's GNB technology they lent me to complete my tasks. From GNB? Why have I never heard of this before? And where do these wormholes lead to? Standard GNB equipment. It's just not for everybody. That's enough questions, Adam. I really don't have to explain myself to you. All right. I'm just curious, is all. Well, you know what they say about curiosity. Look, uh, I've got a lot of stuff to do. At this rate, I'm sure we'll meet again. I think I should inform you. Most wormholes in this part of the cluster lead to the Okar homeworld. I cannot imagine that GNB would have authorized this. To the Okar homeworld? Hive, do you think this really is GNB tech like she said? The wormholes are a byproduct of Okar mining activities, created while excavating the highly volatile crystal energy source, which the Okar call Viridian Energy. In simple terms, the energy crystal signatures released generate a wormhole's basic physics. Over time, the Okar developed a resonance to manipulate the wormhole's stability, allowing safe and fast passage. The main product, Viridian Energy, is primarily used to power the internal infrastructure. For GNB to possess this technology is possible, but for them to use it would be a violation of the current armistice agreement. So Carly is definitely up to something. 
mystery deepens. Okay, so that was something pretty new for me. I've not seen that before. It is a part of the Encounters update, but yeah, I've been I've playing it quite a while. It just goes to show that some of the things, I guess, are fairly rare to actually encounter. Or at the very least, I haven't seen it. Right, these are red dots here are mines. So, the question is, what are they protecting? Don't actually seem to be protecting anything, do they? So, if you get too close to these, these are proximity mines. They will actually explode, but you can shoot them and cause them to detonate. Oh, wow, this is a rather large asteroid, fi uh, asteroid field. It's a rather large debris field, a rather large debris field, and it's very well protected, isn't it? Can't actually see anything in there that's worthy of that level of protection, though. It's very odd. I guess I'm going to have to navigate through here a little bit carefully, just in case we come across some more mines. So these are the GMB guys that Carly was talking about. These are neutral. They won't actually attack me unless I attack them or take some of their stuff. You can see uh, we've got our jump ability suppressed, so as we travel towards what's actually, actually ever causing that, that suppression, the percentage will increase up to 100%, and that's where the blocking location will be. So maybe it's the Elite Okar Corvette actually causing that. Which is unfortunate if so, because I'm not in the position where I can take a Corvette on. Which actually means I'm not getting out of this this area. At least not intact. Right, let's see if we can kite some of them over to here. It looks like this place is just far enough out of range that they won't attack here. Now you saw the, uh, the attack range on that weapon. What, three kilometers? Nearly four kilometers. We don't really want to get hit by that. Trying to figure out how to do this. Looks like I may just have to take the hit and uh, die. If I could get myself another weapon, or if I could get myself repaired right up, then I might stand a chance here, but I can't see any nanobots, so I'm not going to be able to repair my hull. And the other components I need for repair are just not here. I've got plenty of scrap. I could do a little bit more, perhaps, for the other repairs. But I need gel and... Oh, I just need gel. Maybe. You know, maybe. Let's just go get the extra scrap anyway. We might find that it's enough to get me somewhere. So there's a life form up there as well on this debris field. We've got to watch out for mines here, so let's see if we can do a scan of this. We might already have done scans of these, in which case it won't initiate. But it is one of the missions to scan various life forms that are dotted around. Let's see if we can get that scrap without getting too close to those proximity mines. I don't think we'll be able to take too many hits from a proximity mine in my current state. It's just a shame if I can't find any gel here. A bit more scrap. So unfortunately... The only way out of this sector, or the only way out of this zone, is to take on that Corvette, and it looks like that's not going to be happening anytime soon. But we can repair the secondary weapons. Be quite handy to be able to repair the that shield generator. Oh, we got a little bit to repair the. I don't know where those nanobots come from. To repair the hull. Now there was another ship around here. Let's go and see what he drops. Maybe he'll drop something useful. Like nanobots. Unlikely, but possible. No scrap and a fair chunk of credits. Okay, well, we did need some extra credits. 
This is a little bit awkward to say the least. Well, last last bit did we have a few more credits. Well I might as well pick those up because it'd be a waste not to. I'll need them when I inevitably explode. Oh, there's some gel. Okay, I don't know if anyone noticed that slightly early on, but looks like it's going to be very close to the... Very close to the Corvette. Maybe I can burn into it and quickly burn away again. Let's try and do a little tiny bit of evasive flying here. You don't need to do too much to evade this fire. A little bit of strafing generally does the job. But we've got to be careful not to run out of thrust. Let's get behind this asteroid and we can repair up. Oh, I think I'm slightly short on scrap as well though, aren't I? Let's have a look again. Yes. Oh no. Short on nanobots. The hardest things to come by. Well, one of. Right, well, that's it, pretty much it. The Okar forces, which are inbound, these come after you hang around too long in a particular system. Okar forces will bring with them... Well, well, let's see. You might as well see what's going to go on. I normally try and get out of the area before this actually happens, but... It's going to be a bit of a fireworks show. I'll get away from the Corvette so you can actually see it happen, but... This is the inevitable destruction. I'm not going to be able to survive this. Plenty of warning, though. I'm sure we never used to get quite that amount of warning for the uh, Okar fighters to turn up. And there you can see. Right, we've got one Corvette there. Another Corvette there, and... Oh, look at this. I had two more Corvettes. Four Corvettes. Let's do a suicide run. <laughs> that, unfortunately, was inevitable at that point. But we've got 7,000 credits to spend. Let's go back to the hangar and we'll see what we can purchase. So, well, we have got a number of ships here. Again, very quickly, for those of you that are new to this, we've got the uh, Interceptor, which is what I was using. This is actually my favourite ship. It's a default ship, but my favourite one which is why I haven't locked, unlocked these on this particular playthrough this time. This is the Colonial Scout. I did unlock these once before, but it's not my favourite ship, and I'm not going to waste the money on it just yet. Same for the uh, Colonial Gunship. This is far slower, much less manoeuvrable than the Interceptor, but got some very good weapons on it. The Scout is much lighter and faster than the Interceptor, but this is basically a glass cannon, so it does have some good weapons but you can die very quickly in it, so this is a pretty good all-rounder, and it's why I like the ship. So there's three ships. Oh, no, there's four ships. The Sentinel's actually pretty nice as well. So let's have a look at perks. Let's have a look at what we want to increase. We haven't got a huge amount of money to spend, but we've got a reasonable amount of money. Right. Uh, nanobot efficiency we've already used. Hit repair rate. Increases the speed of repair in your hull. Okay, might as well... Go for that, as you saw, we had a bit of a problem with the hull. Now we're down to 272 credits. I don't think there's much I can spend that on. I can spend it on uh, retrieval. Reveals the location of your last clone ship's wreck on the map and let you salvage it. Get more out of traders and service stations or the amount of different consumables your ship can carry. Unlocks enhancement slots. Let's go for that. And we're done. Right, so let's launch, and today, let's go for hard mode. And we're ready to go. Right, so we do have easy, normal, and hard modes, and on the start menu, there's also a hardcore mode. So four different modes to play through. We've got some plasma clouds here. So this is a very dark-looking area of space. Less colourful, but one of the more interesting ones. I do think, at least personally. So, what have we got? We... Ooh, these guys are under attack over there. It looks like 
Oh, it looks like they're doing all the work for me. Alright, I'm going to go over to these ones. You know what? I left the Sentinel Sentinel activated instead of the um, Interceptor. Not to worry. Now, what's nice about the Sentinel is this lightning weapon. You can see it actually arcing across. You can see it arcing across to the other nearby enemies. Not quite as powerful on a target per target basis, but it has got a semi area of effect capability. And the missiles are actually corrosive as well. So the lightning gun does take down the shields very, very fast. Slightly less effective against the hull, but all in all. Not too bad, and we've got a missile incoming there somewhere. Looks like I managed to evade it. Nope, 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 I haven't. Let's get behind the asteroid here. Right. <laughs> right, oh. We got any missiles? We got corrosive missiles. that one done but there are a couple of other turrets around here and I've just used my EMP generator and you can see it's taken that offline I should have used that a bit earlier we do have a bunch of modules equipped to the ship we've got a device charger and an EMP generator EMP generators absolutely excellent and I should have thought to use it initially there you know I'll tell you what another nice thing about this visually is always the explosions very kinetic feel to them if that makes any sense so dotted about you will find various freighter wrecks you'll also find uh, abandoned space stations and things like that there's actually a very huge space station that you can come across later on in the game as well and the larger ones you can actually fly right inside of and that they can contain all manner of goodies. In some cases, some pretty unique weapons. So the weapon is pretty weak against these crates, that's for sure. The Gatling gun would have been straight through those crates with about one, one bullet. few bits I left behind over there. Never leave a zone without picking up as many things as you can actually afford to pick up, right? I don't think I'm going to make it over to there. I'm going to try. Come on. I just want the container. Right. And now it's time to get out of here. <laughs> Cutting is pretty fine, aren't I? No! <sighs> that was close. When you actually get hit, it actually causes the uh, countdown to decrease. So every time you actually hit, it causes a problem to get out. This is pretty interesting. A high risk jump gate. So I can choose either routes here. And we've got one of our little encounter dudes over here. So we're about to see them on the next jump. So let's head on here. But I think for now, this is where we leave it, and we'll pick up here from the next video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.